Hey everyone, this is Liz of Consume My Books, and today we are going on a bookshelf tour of my bookshelves because A, a couple people have asked in the past, and B, because I have been um, surprisingly overwhelmed by an unprecedented desire to clean and organize my room lately. So I figured, hey, it's about time for a tour, right? So we're going to start at the top and go down, and the top and go down. Um, I'd also like to note that this tour is going to be in four videos, and that's not because of the actual length, but because I have to do some feng shui to show you everything. So yeah, let's get started. So here's the top of my shelf. I've got a lot of stuffed animals, my college diploma, which I actually need to buy a frame for, but the frame I want is super pricey. Um, some Jane Austen novels, which my dad put there, and I was just like, okay, cool. Um, I keep swag in this box right here, and here we have my literary action figures, Jane Austen and Edgar Allan Poe. That's very cool. Um, I do worry that the fact that I own two literary action figures will scare off how shall we say members of the opposite sex, but I figure my future um, significant others will embrace the fact that I'm a nerd. And um, I've also got a playbill from when I saw Waiting for Gatto in London hiding back there, signed by Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart, so that is completely awesome. Just saying. Um, my top hat and three of the Harry Potter books on audio cassette. I really need to get these updated to CD already, um, so then I can get them, all of them on CD and onto iTunes and listen to them whenever I want because Jim Dale is an awesome narrator. Okay, so moving on. Um, I'd like to note that I've organized a lot of my books by height because it makes it easier to do this. Yeah, makes it easier to lay the books down. Okay, so we have um, just kind of a random book stuck in here. Most of these first two shelves are adult, by the way. Um, we've got a graphic novel section here. Kind of some adult hardcovers. I went to Kenyon College, in case you can't already tell. Some Norton anthologies that my dad gave me. I think he might have actually gotten them for free because he's a professor. Some kind of non-fiction stuff there, going down again. This is actually a UK first edition of um, At Swim Two Boys. My Irish lit professor recommended that book at the end of the semester. Uh, some kind of adult hardcovers, modern library classics, um, Penguin hardcover classics. I really love these editions, they're fantastic. Um, and here we have some of my Oxford World classics and um, several of my Broadview editions. I really like having all of the um, imprints together. Um, I just think it looks really nice to do it that way. So we go down and we have more Oxford World Classics. Penguin! I really like Penguin. I think they're an awesome publisher. Um, more books. These are, I think a lot of these are either Penguin or Puffin. Um, a stuffed bison, which I'm going to move out of the way. Um, for those of you who are wondering why I have a stuffed bison, I worked for a summer in Grand Teton National Park, and I did a program about, bi about bison, so that's why I have this guy. Um, some vintage classics from the UK. Um, Misty a Book Rat is going to hate me, but I have this cover. Yay, I love it. Um, of I Capture the Castle. Um, and then some kind of kids' books here. These, f f like, five books here are actually... Um, things that my dad had when he was a kid, um, and now they are part of my room. He definitely read this one to me at, when I was little, and I think he read part of Danny Dunn and the Swamp Monster. I read some of it myself. I don't totally remember. Okay, and going down another shelf. Um, up top here I have most of the books that I own from the Speak imprint. Um, I actually still need to read most of these, but I have them, so I need to just, to just get on top of that. Um, we've got some Beverly Cleary here, some books by Hyperion. I really loved this book, Stranded in Fifth Grade, and I got to meet the author, so that was pretty cool. Um, the uh, Lloyd Alexander books, I don't remember what that series is called, but I bought them in like sixth grade, and hey, I still need to read them. Um, yeah, I know it's probably annoying some of you guys that I have like these three and this one broken up because they're all part of one series, but the reason for that is because this one is Yearling Newberry, and these are... Dell apparently, and it <laughs> was gonna annoy me to have like this yearling Newberry with those when I have these over here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm OCD. Um, some Neil Gaiman books. I love Neil Gaiman. Stardust is a fantastic book if you love fairy tales. I recommend reading that. Um, 
Bill Bryson. If you ever get the chance to see Bill Bryson speak in person, go because, oh my goodness, he is hysterical. It's amazing. Um, and some Khaled Hussini, some Jodie Picoult. And then going down another shelf, we have some more adult paperbacks. And then these two stacks are just like random mass market paperbacks that have all been kind of grouped together because that's how they fit best and that's how they best utilize shelf space. <laughs> and that's what I'm interested in is best utili utilizing my shelf space. Okay, so we've got some miscellaneous paperbacks here. I think they're largely YA and children's with the exception of Elizabethan fiction. Um, this series right here, The Worst Witch Books, is actually not something I'd heard of until my year abroad in the UK, and then one of my friends told me about them, and I read them, and they're actually really cute, fun reads. Um, definitely middle grade, so if you love middle grade books about witches, check those out. And if we go down, we've got a stack of Norton Critical Editions there. I have to say, I really love the Norton Critical Editions. You're probably thinking right now that you've seen more than one edition of some of the classics um, during this tour. Sorry about that. I heard the radio out in the hall, I guess, and I was like, what? Um, but anyways, so Norton Critical Editions are really great because they have critical essays about the books in the back, and whereas if we go up Broadview, um, these have really good like historical contents ab content about the books, and if you're going to write a paper, um, going back down, about a book, then usually it's good to have like both of those editions handy to kind of get both the critical and the historical and really get a full perspective. Or at least that's what I think because I am a major nerd. Um, so anyways, now we're going back up. Sorry if that made you guys dizzy. Um, so we've got a whole bunch of random stuff here. This is just random organized by height. This is actually a signed first edition. Oh my gosh. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I can't help it. I sometimes like to brag about my side books. Don't hate me. This is actually a picture that my mom took in Paris, which I'm going to move aside for the moment. Got more books back there. Do, 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 do. Julie Kagawa, yay! I still need to read The Iron Daughter, actually. Please yell at me to do that. Okay, and we're going to go down again. This was a souvenir which I picked up during my year abroad in England. I had to get a Paddington bear. That was like the one souvenir I knew I wanted going into that year. So we've got another, still a mix of YA and adult here. Again, another picture my mom took in Paris. I'm going to move this. Um, that's my worn copy of Harriet the Spy. I loved this book as a kid. Um, that's a UK copy of A Gathering Light. Again, a book I acquired when I was abroad. And here we have some of my Quark's classics. The Pride and Prejudice and Zombies books and Sense and Sensibility and Sea Monsters. Then we have my stack of Barnes and Noble classics. I quite like that imprint. One of the reasons I like it is because it's actually pretty inexpensive. And inexpensive is never a bad thing. Okay, and these next two shelves are YA hardcovers. So this stack is pretty much all Meg Cabot and Anne Brashares. I love the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants books. If you love Chicklet and haven't read those books, you need to pick these up. Then we have your Hunger Games. And again, just more miscellaneous hardcovers. Um, I actually was at my local indie and I was buying a copy of this that was just on the shelf. And I know the, pers the person who owns the store really well and he was like, this is an autographed copy behind the case. And I was originally going to sell it for 30 but I'll sell it to you for cheaper. Um, because I've had it around for so long, and I was like, sweet! So, this is a signed copy. OMG! Um, Anna and the French Kiss. Guys, if you haven't already, read this book. It is fantastic. Loved it. Read it. Also, read Before I Fall. That's another fantastic book. We've got, let's see, Diana Peter from some Tamora Pierce. I love Tamora Pierce, Philip Pullman. And Harry Potter. We've got the whole set in hardcover. If you have not already read Harry Potter, you need to. They're fantastic books. I grew up with these books. Um, I think I already told this story in my IMM vlogs, but I convinced my parents to order all three of these for me at once because I'd been really dubious about reading the Harry Potter series because apparently I was a cynical little sixth grader and I was like, eh, but everyone else thinks likes them and I won't. And then my friend who loaned me like 
three full tote bags of books the first time I slept over at her house. I was like, Liz, these are really good. And then I had them all on the bus, on the bus ride home, and they were like sitting on top of my saxophone, and one girl was like, you're reading all of those? Um, and then I read the first one, and it was true love. And that's, you know, the rest is history, as they say. I know, very cliche to me. I'm sorry about that. I won't do it again. Please forgive me. <laughs> okay, and then we have another shelf of mass market paperbacks. So, it's kind of a wide shot, if you will, of the whole shelf, and I'll try and zoom in on some stuff here. I kind of hate double stacking them like this, but again, starting to run out of space. I'll pull some of these back so you can see what's actually back here. Um, we've got some Colleen McCullough and Redwall. And let's see. Ah, yes. Dang it. Uh, Narnia is back here. C.S. Lewis. Love him. Love Narnia as a kid. And then we have Tamora Pierce over here. And I'll move Taz out of the way. Sorry if the um, tilting camera is kind of freaking out and making you dizzy. But more mass market paper backs here. And um, I need to do some feng shui to complete the rest of this video. So this concludes part one of the bookshelf tour. I hope you guys enjoyed it.